Tom Malasi, and I'm a parish co-captain uh, for the Connecticut Catholic Men's Conference. I got involved last year. Um, four of us uh, went uh, together to the conference, and uh, last year we got a lot out of it. Uh, this year um, we felt that we should promote it uh, much better to other uh, men here at the parish because uh, there's a need we find, or I find, to get more men into fellowship and brotherhood with us uh, so that uh, we can uh, share together our faith and uh, to walk the journey together back to God. We have a uh, men's, uh, what we call men's fellowship uh, group that uh, meets every Saturday morning um, at 7.30 at the church. And uh, we have probably 90, 90 to 95% of the time uh, one of our two priests there, either our pastor, uh, Father Nick Cirillo, or uh, the associate uh, pastor, who is now uh, Harry Pietro, with us, and we uh, we go over the um, gospel and the readings uh, for that Sunday, and then we discuss them and share our thoughts about them with the priest uh, present, and he uh, then uh, shares uh, what. Um, what uh, the meaning of the, the, those readings and the gospel are, so the men learn more about uh, um, that Sunday than if they were not to attend um, those meetings. And it's grown, you know, I've been, we've been doing it for probably 10 years, I would estimate, uh, but it's grown over the years. We've got more and more men involved. And um, the other thing, uh, <coughs> Father Nick um, had, um, the thought to do was to sponsor two years ago, start sponsoring a men's uh, softball team. So you take men's softball team on a Sunday morning league, you know, that's going to take away uh, from men attending mass, which it really hasn't. And what it's done is it's brought more men into having a good time and sharing fellowship with uh, other men on the softball field. Um, <clears throat> that they would have otherwise have done if we didn't have the team. And uh, many of those uh, men have now become knights. And uh, we've uh, also gotten uh, some of them to attend the men's fellowship meetings on, uh, on um, Saturday mornings. takeaway for me from the conference, um, attending the conferences, is, uh, is that um, it's just very encouraging to see so many men um, attending, you know, sharing the faith and our, our, um, our um, you know, wanting to be there and wanting to learn more uh, about their faith and locking arms, so to speak. Uh, together on the uh, straight and narrow path back to God and uh, you, you know because I think uh, as far as applying that here to the parish uh, that one thought is that that's what we're trying to build here at our parish is men fellowshipping together locking arms staying on that right path back to God and if one falls off that path we're going to pick that guy up and get him right back on that road so, um, you know, that would be one thing. Of course, the learning experience of, um, of the faith uh, would be the other. I mean, we have, you know, they have great, uh, great speakers. Uh, the speakers uh, are well, uh, you know, thought about. Um, and they deliver a, uh, you know, clear, concise message. I think the greatest need for men is to join in fellowship. I keep using that as the you know theme, but but I think uh, we need to share 
our faith. We need to know that we're not alone in our faith and lock those arms together on that right path and help each other in that journey back to God, in our journey back to God through the Catholic faith. Um, so, so that's uh, what I think if you were to ask me the one thing that's lacking with men is to reach out to other men to join us in fellowship. Uh, and so that would be the support I would be looking forward to um, from our pastor is how can we outreach to men, the Catholics that may have become nun, nuns and those that are just casual Catholics right now. How do we reach those guys? Those that don't come to Mass necessarily and pick up a bulletin or look at the website to see what programs we have. You know, at, uh, as Catholic men, at baptism, of course, we receive the saving grace of God. We, of course, became part of God's family. But I think what many men might look, uh, lose sight of is the other thing is that we were called to be disciples of uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that um, that would be the, you know, the key, the theme of this con conference is to, to go into the world um, is to share the gospel and to share the Lord with others. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really uh, juiced up, if you will, uh, about uh, the future. Um, and I'm hoping we'll get the support of our pastor. Our past pastor is fully behind the uh, Connecticut Catholic Men's Conference. Um, we, uh, he sent um, the brochure and, uh, and a um, personal invitation letter to 160 men in the parish. And uh, me and uh, our co-captain, conference captain here, uh, Otis Shelton, um, we've, you know, we've put in a lot of work um, to follow up with these men. Uh, we're, we're in the, uh, if you will, the full court press stage right now, and we're making personal phone calls to men that we've identified that would have interest in the conference. So we hope to uh, you know, grow the number of uh, men attending the conference, and then the task for Otis and I will be to um, determine how we can take that spiritual high the men receive at the conference and continue that here at the parish, whether it's participating in our men's fellowship on, uh, on uh, Saturday mornings or um, coming up with some uh, faith formation program for men that need to relearn or even learn the basics of the Catholic faith. Um, and getting them involved in that. Uh, we're not sure right now, but it will, um, it will um, require uh, some outreach uh, to others that, as I said earlier, that don't attend Mass and are casual Catholics. And how do we reach them to bring back men to our church that may have left?